In the predatory world of MMA, where one's career is on the line every time, fighters rarely show mercy to fallen enemies. And although some octagon warriors try to avoid inflicting unnecessary damage, it may turn out that being a gentleman isn't worth the trouble. Today, we pay homage to cage gladiators with excessive karma points who resisted the urge to hurt the wounded and rightfully deserved respect from the fans. Those who saw prime Paul Daly are well aware of the TNT in his hands. What is like that old cliche of the Seems very calm. Oh, we got nailed! In 2010, the welterweight was riding a knockout streak in the ultimate promotion and earned a number one contender match. Nevertheless, the Josh Koscheck post-fight fiasco cut Semtex's UFC stunt short. The resilient Brit signed with Strike Force and faced the comeback king, Scott Smith, in December. Conscious for the time being, Smith ate a hefty 1 2 in the very beginning. Smith's lucky that man. Then got stunned with several left hands and decided to go for broke. A thunderous left hook, one that could make Mike Tyson drop a blunt in shock, became the highlight of the year. And he comes back down. Oh! By 2017, Samtek settled in Bellator and fought Brennan Ward. The American promised sheer dominance, but come the third minute, the cage became too small for two. The Brit proved worthy of his nickname with a spinning elbow and a flying knee to Brennan's dome. Spinning elbow oh! In 2022, 39-year-old Paul retired from the sport. The send-off bout in May didn't go without a hitch. Gutting through the early trouble, Daly pulled off a successful sweep. On the feet, he set the building on fire for the last time. Not that long ago, hardcore fans saw a future UFC lightweight champion in Meyerbeck Taisumov. Excellent wrestling. Complemented with tremendous power made rivals crash harder than crypto exchanges. Oh! To keep that distance as he's throwing the kick. Oh! The fight that put Taisumov on the radar was the one against Demir Khadzevich. At the four minute mark, he landed a right cross and moved in for the kill. A picture perfect uppercut by the Chechen Highlander sent the Bosnian's head to the front row. In September of 2017, Meyerbeck clashed with Felipe Silva. The unbeaten Brazilian finisher took a minute and a half to get rid of. An intercepting right down the pipe became the gem of Taisumov's career. With five consecutive wins in UFC, all by knockout, Meyerbeck fell victim to visa issues that prevented him from realizing his full potential. Josh Emmett has been one of the key players in the UFC featherweight division. The American wrestles like a Dagestani standout, Boy, throws nuclear bombs with both hands, and slugs it out old school style. Again, that left connected. The bout against Ricardo Lamas, still hot after the victory over Charles Oliveira, was no walk in the park. But in a shootout with a dangerous scrapper, Emmett used the wisdom of his favorite uncle, One Punch Man. Lamas, though, at least statistically, has been the more efficient striker. Down and out, 
goes Lamas! Josh Emmett! A left hook found its home, and the fires in Lamas' eyes perished on the way down. So at least statistically has been the more efficient oh! striker. In March of 2019, Josh went to war with Michael Johnson. The counterpart was revered for having lightning fast hands. Albeit following 14 minutes of toe to toe action, Emmett found a way to subdue Johnson. Michael Johnson so far. A soul-snatching overhand made Michael cling on to an imaginary pillow in the dreamland. That's Michael it. Johnson's already sleeping. So far, yeah. Oh. Short left. One shot. Oh. One kill. That was the motto of the once formidable light heavyweight Jimmy Manoa. During the first five years in MMA, the unbeaten UK prospect scored 13 knockouts in 14 showings. But a heartbreaking kiss by Alexander Gustafsson's knee. Oh, that's a huge oh, big knee. Gustafsson. Jimmy's He's hurt. To finish. Jimmy's Made Jimmy lose the mojo for two years. It wasn't until he faced recent title challenger Ovin St. Pru that Manoa regained the destructive form. He's walking and stepping on his heels. Oh, he's hurt. Again, Manoa. That's it. Then, in March of 2017, Jimmy got back to business opposite Corey Anderson and scored his most memorable finish. Manoa gets impatient. Oh, that's a lovely left hand. Oh, right down. Oh, oh, punch. Oh, Knockout. Unfortunately, the short-lived career peak was followed by a disappointing downfall. In 2019, Jimmy had his last violent tango against Alexander Rakic. Three years before Kamaru Usman made it popular, the Brit bit on a fake left cross and got slept with a deadly high kick. One shot, one kill. Michael Chandler is one of the most successful Bellator alumni. Having joined the organization in 2010, he made a name for himself in no time. Massacre of the year with the arch nemesis Eddie Alvarez earned Chandler the lightweight crown. But Michael's best showcase in the promotion took place in 2016. The dance partner for the vacant belt was Patricky Pitbull. The Brazilian earned this title shot by starching the great Randy Couture's son, Ryan, with a single touch. This is it! We're done! We are done! Man! The electrified air smelled of ozone, and the first lightning strike didn't take long. At the three-minute mark, Patricky stopped dead in his tracks and got evaporated with a trademark decapitating cross. Chandler managed to recreate similar magic in the UFC six years later. Even we cannot make comments while watching Ferguson's limp body collapse to the floor. Let's observe again in silence. At UFC 250, the matchmakers proved their worth. The anniversary event was marked by two knockout of the year candidates, each a walk-off stunner. The pay-per-view portion of the card was introduced by the new generation, a Diaz Bros fan and a Twitch streamer, Sean O'Malley. He was opposed by the one grizzled vet, Eddie Vineland. Two minutes was enough for the young talent to stun the old dog. You gotta be careful here though, because when you're engaging O'Malley, Ooh. look, he's good with that. And one punch him afterwards. Right whenever he's going in and out, in and out, he does a fan. Oh! 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 oh my goodness. Nevertheless, the biggest pop went to the What Went Wrong documentary star, Cody Garbrandt. 
the non-apologetic Berserker had been brutally sent to the Shadow Realm in three previous outings. But facing the perennial contender, Hafaela Sunsau, Cody surprisingly did not go ham. And it seemed like for a while Mark Henry He patiently kept the Brazilian at a distance and invested into low kicks. A split camp for Toward the end of the second round, a Sunsau took a risk in order to change the tide. Late in the round. Let's just hope that this glass cannon has more devastating shots stored. One night in 1998, a rendezvous between two heavyweights changed the sport forever. Mark Coleman, the first regular UFC champion, lost the title a year prior. Even so, the hammer still looked capable of bringing down the Golden Gate. In contrast, the counterpart, Pete Williams, was new to the organization and relatively unknown. The godfather of ground and pound spent the opening five minutes bouncing his stone fists off of Williams' dome. On the feet, though, he had to hang on for dear life. Even a sharp knee didn't convince him to keep his hands up. And finally, Coleman shoots for a leg. Oh, the knee that is how the hammer became an anvil. In the span of 13 minutes, Williams set a blueprint how to beat pure wrestlers and recorded one of the most popular underdog stories in MMA. Two years earlier, Tank Abbott scored a walk-off knockout. He may step in. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. A knockout. Oh, my. I'm off the fence. And as a bonus for those who are nostalgic about the VHS era of prize fighting, a clash between Brad Kohler and Steve Judson. Old school fans may remember them as bald jack dudes going at it in a cage. Great speed, good lateral movement. Oh my goodness! Sometimes it seems that the former UFC light heavyweight champion, Lyoto Machida, is living two separate lives. One where he's criticized for riding a bike in the octagon. And another, where the creator of the Rashad face is revered for seesaw battles and mind-blowing knockouts. What remains unchanged is respect for staying true to the warrior code. In 2013, the Brazilian dropped down to middleweight and was greeted by Mark Munoz. They touch gloves and from the beginning, the dragon made the Filipino worry about kicks to the midsection. Going on in MMA, unfortunately, but and then took aim at the head. His output and trying to finish fights, and that's it. That's it. It's over. Just like that. You just nailed it. Wow. A high kick broke Munoz's will to resist, and Machida refused to add insult to injury. Lyoto found himself in a similar situation five years later against Vitor Belfort. By the six-minute mark of this contactless battle, the fans were booing in dismay. A picture-perfect front kick by the Karate Master changed the opponents and their minds. The fallen phenom ended his 22-year-long MMA career. The Dragon, on the other hand, went to Bellator on a high note to collect fat paychecks. Demetrius Johnson is one of the greatest athletes to grace the sport. In 11 successful UFC title defenses, he crushed one flyweight challenger after the other. Perfect. If you, if you, oh! Oh! And pushed the boundaries of reality with the power of imagination. But in 2019, Mighty Mouse was sent to Asia as part of a somewhat insulting trade. He entered the 135-pound division and conquered the one championship Grand Prix. 
then failed miserably in the contest for the belt against Adriano Marias. Now for the champion, throws a knee the jaw, DJ's hurt! The sweet revenge took place in August of 2022. Many were nervously biting their nails while Johnson was gutting his way through the prologue. Halfway into the bout, Mighty Mouse found the groove and began stalking the reigning champ around the cage. He was especially persistent with knees. In the fourth round, the tit for tat reached red levels. And Demetrius decided to unleash the storm. The right found its home, and a pinpoint accurate knee crumbled the Brazilian to the mat. Exquisite and savage artistry. Oh, big right, DJ! It's done! Big knee! The K1 of the early 2000s. Mark Hunt was the only one capable of both withstanding a killer blow and dishing out one in response. In 2001, this ability skyrocketed him to the pinnacle of kickboxing. Meanwhile, having transitioned to MMA, the Super Samoan held his own against the titans of Pride FC. Wanderlei had to suffer Hunt's atomic butt drop. Oh my god! The atomic butt drop! <laughs> Fyodor barely saved the arm. Oh my god! And Crow Cop almost broke his leg against the brick head. But Mark's first clean knockout came only in 2006. Former boxing world champion Yosuke Nishijima turned out to be a tough nut to crack. The Japanese went back and forth with the bigger man for two rounds. And miraculously survived a rough cannonball. Yet by the third frame, he had reached the point of no return. By Nishijima, met with a Japanese fight, and that rocks Nishijima, and it's over! Three months later, against Tsuyoshi Kasaka, Hunt didn't need help from the ref as well. Ooh, big overhead right. I mean, are you Mark fixed his shorts himself. That's it. I was just gonna... However, target practice with Japanese kamikazes could not last forever. By 2011, the Super Samoan was scrapping in the UFC octagon, only achieving a losing record. The future was hazy to say the least, but the performance against Chris Tuxurer saved Hunt, ending the rival's career at the same time. Tuxurer continuing to smash up. A single uppercut from the kickboxing legend sent the opponent straight into retirement. In 2013, Mark crossed paths with Stefan Struve. Back to his bulldozer ways, the Samoan viciously wrecked the Dutch skyscraper. Mandibular rearrangement took three rounds, and by the end, Hunt burst into the division elite. A year later, he ran into Roy Nelson. Both had an emergency meeting at the local McDonald's and decided to call it a day in the second round. You know, it's, really, it's been solid for a couple years now. Where, oh, that's it. A bludgeoning uppercut introduced Big Country's face to the canvas. This highlight reel finish became a knockout of the year. Boom! Man, what accuracy! Finally, in 2016, Hunt ended the 15-year-long career of the former UFC champion, Frank Mir. A deafening roar from the crowd and Mark fading into the sunset, the referee should have figured out earlier that it was all over.
MMA history knows a lot more jaw-dropping walk-off destructions. If you like the video and want to see another chapter, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and vote for sport. his chair, his corner should be allowed in. Herb Dean is saying the fight is not over. And the cornerman in. There was obviously some confusion. Michael!